This is the video I wish I had when I was switching from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve. I collected all the questions that I had when I was switching and put it into this video so that you are able to have a way easier transition. All the things that I'm going to show you in this video are possible with the free version. Without wasting any more time, let's start with the tutorial. When you first open DaVinci, you'll see the project manager interface. On the left side, you can create a database. A database is where your computer stores the projects you create. Inside this database, you can set up new projects and create folders to organize them better. In Premiere, you're used to working with project files. If you want a copy of your project in DaVinci to send to someone or store elsewhere, you can right-click on your project and choose Export Project. Let's start by creating a new project and giving it a name. For example, no more subscription fees. And there you have it, the power of DaVinci is now in your hands. Now let me quickly walk you through the interface so you know where everything important is. The most important part is the bar at the bottom where you'll see different tabs. These are like different programs inside one project. The editing page is where you'll spend most of your time, equivalent to Premiere Pro's main workspace. The Fusion page is for compositing and special effects, similar to After Effects. The Color page is for color grading. The Fairlight page is for audio editing and recording, like Adobe Audition. And the Deliver page is where you export your projects in various formats or set up render queues, like Media Encoder. And this is where DaVinci really shines. It doesn't matter in which page you are, you're always working on the same project. So that means you can edit, take your clip and hop fast into the color page, do a color grading, go back to your edit page, continue editing. And if you want to do some VFX, you simply hop with one click into the Fusion page, do your effects and head back to the edit page in one click and it's pre-rendered. If you want to record audio, you head over to Fail Ed page, record your voiceover and you're back in one click in the edit page. This is just so powerful. It's basically dynamic linking, but it actually works and it's so convenient and fast. Before we start editing, you need to set up your project settings. Click the little icon in the corner to open your project settings. Set your resolution and frame rate here. It's crucial to choose your frame rate before adding any clips to the timeline because changing it later will mess up your entire edit. If you frequently work with the same frame rate, Go to the three dots and save those settings as the default for future projects. Very important, you can also define here whether you want to work on a vertical or horizontal project. Now let's dive into the edit page. The media pool is where you can drag and drop all the media you need for your project. Or you can create folders, bins to organize your files. You'll also notice buttons that toggle windows like the media pool. If you don't need a window, you can hide it to maximize your workspace. In Premiere, you have a toolbar for tools. In DaVinci Resolve, it's located here. You have the pointer, blade tool for cuts, snapping tool to align clips and let them snap once you're close to another clip, and linking options to connect or separate audio from video. Unlike Premiere, DaVinci has a fixed layout. While some people dislike this, I find it helpful because it prevents getting lost or accidentally misplacing windows. Unlike Premiere, you can't fully move your windows around in DaVinci to create your own layout. A lot of people complain about this, but honestly, I prefer the fixed layout. In Premiere, how many times did you open a ton of folders and not know where you were? Or accidentally move a window and lose it completely? In DaVinci, everything stays where it should and you just toggle on and off what you need. If you need a specific window, activate it, use it and deactivate it to get back to your workspace. And yes, you can still resize windows to fit your needs. Now let's finally import some clips into our timeline so we can start working. Here, everything works as you're used to in Premiere. You can trim your clips by dragging the endings. If you press between two clips, you can also change the position of your clip. Now let's address a common question I get asked a lot. How do you get smooth playback in DaVinci Resolve? If you don't have the fastest computer, your footage might lag during playback. Here are five ways to fix that. 1. Work in a 1080p timeline even if you plan to export in 4K. You can switch it back to 4K before exporting. Second, go to playback and drop the timeline resolution to half or quarter. This reduces playback quality but not export quality. Third, under playback select render cache and choose smart. DaVinci will pre-render clips and you'll see a red line turn blue once it's ready. Fourth, for specific clips with heavy effects, right click on them and choose Generate Optimized Media. Fifth, create proxies by selecting your footage, right clicking and choosing Generate Proxies. Then enable Prefer Proxies under Playback. If none of these work, then it's because you're working with a stone. Now let me show you more of the windows you can open and close here. 
you have the effects pool where you can find all your effects. What's amazing is that you actually get a preview of the effects before applying them. Just hover over an effect and DaVinci will show you exactly what it looks like. The same goes for transitions. Place your playhead between two clips, scroll through the transitions and find the one that fits best. There are tons to choose from, so take some time to get familiar with them. You'll also find titles here, including lots of pre-made animations that you can customize later. Speaking of customization, let's talk about the inspector window. It's a little like the effects controls in Premiere, where you can scale, rotate and keyframe, but it works a bit differently. When you open the inspector, you'll see different panels depending on what clip or element you have selected. For example, if you select a video clip, you can adjust transform controls like scale, position and rotation. You can also crop edges, change the opacity or select different blending modes under composite. And here's something awesome. You can stabilize your footage directly in the inspector. Just press stabilize and you'll have multiple modes to choose from depending on your needs. And guess what? In DaVinci you can stabilize and adjust the speed of your clip without any issues. The days of nesting your clips just to combine these effects are over. Welcome to the future. The inspector also lets you modify audio settings like volume and pitch. If you drag an effect onto a clip, like a camera shake, the inspector will open a settings panel for the effect. You can tweak everything, such as the intensity and speed of the shake, to fit your needs. The same goes for transitions. If you apply a transition like an edge wipe between two clips, you can select it and adjust settings like angle and border width directly in the inspector. And of course, all these values can be keyframed. Keyframing in DaVinci works a bit differently than in Premiere. Instead of directly adjusting keyframes in the inspector, you toggle them on by clicking the diamond icon, which turns red when active. Move forward in the timeline, make changes, and DaVinci will create the keyframe for you. If you want to see your keyframes, click the keyframe icon on your clip to open the editor. Here you can drag keyframes to adjust their position or timing. For smooth animations, open the speed graph editor, select your keyframes and change the interpolation to ease. Use the handles to create perfectly smooth transitions. To create speed points, you need to toggle on the read time controls by right clicking or pressing the shortcut command plus R to activate them. Now you can create a speed point by clicking on this little arrow here. If you grab the clip at the top right corner, you can change its speed by dragging it left or right. You can see the speed percentage right here. Let's create a second speed point to slow down only the middle part. You do this by grabbing the point at the top to change the speed. If you grab the speed point on the lower half, you only change its position without altering the speed of your footage. If you're working on a project with multiple timelines, which I highly recommend, you can easily organize them. Open the media pool, right click in an empty space and choose create timeline. Rename them by double clicking the text and you're good to go. To quickly switch between timelines and copy clips back and forth, enable display stacked timelines. They'll appear stacked here and you can easily jump between them. You can even stack multiple timelines on top of each other to work faster. Let's close that for now and go over some other useful features you might be searching for. For example, if you're looking for adjustment layers, you can find them in the effects library under effects. Drag one onto your timeline and use it to apply effects across multiple clips. For example, let me show you a use case and teach you another cool feature in DaVinci. If you head over to your inspector window again, you can activate dynamic zoom. This basically adds a continuous zoom throughout your entire clip. To adjust your audio, you can expand your track size here and use this line to adjust the volume. If you hold option, you can create points and keyframe your audio level. If you want to export your clip, you first have to define the section you want to export. You do this by hitting the letter I on your keyboard to set an in marker and the letter O to set an out marker. Now you have this marked area that will be exported. Next, head over to the deliver page where you have many different presets to choose from. Choose the format you want to export and the location where your file should be saved. Once you're happy, press add to render queue. You can add as many videos as you want with different settings. Then just select them and hit export. If you have any more specific questions, put them in the comments. I try to answer them over the next month, but I hope some of these tips just help you to have a way easier start in the Thank you for watching and let's start creating.